familiar about all this. Hey guys, I'm Shay, and welcome back to Hacker Labs. Hacker Labs is a series where we take fictional technology, all the stuff you see in movies, and we make it come to life and make it as functional as possible. I'm sure you guys remember last time we made an Iron Man helmet, and we had a lot of firsts. We incorporated the hollow lens, and we were able to make it open on its own with voice command. It was really, really cool. This time we have a brand new project, and we're in a brand new super cool space. We have some old returning students and some brand new students. So what do you think? Let's meet the team. What's up? Hi, 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 hi. Hi. Oh, you guys are really strong. Yeah, good game. Wait, no, it's just starting. Let's go. All right, guys, I have an announcement. I got something really cool I wanted to show you guys. I remember last time we made the Iron Man helmet, so I showed you a little bit about Iron Man. But today I have a special treat. So if everyone could look over here, pretty please, thank you. Do, 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 do. It's movie time. I won't ever do that again. I need to bore you. Hoverboard? Where is he? Here. Well, let's build something like that. What do you guys think? Yeah. Is it feasible to make something like that? Not that high. No. No. Close enough. Well, what characteristics from that hoverboard can we bring into the one that we're creating today? It will hover and it can take an angle, but that's it. My name is Dylan Sayers. I'm in entertainment business, and I am in month 13. I'm more of like a lead. I'll be working more fabrication, but I mean, we're just going to be kind of conversing back and forth, and it's going to be more of a mixed group than it was like back in with Iron Man. My name is Abhijit Malamkar. I'm in mobile development, and I'm about to graduate in two months. To get a chance to work on HoloLens, it was pretty amazing. I got random people messaging me that it was pretty cool, and like I learned a lot of things uh, doing that project for sure. Hi, what's your name? My name's Howard. You can call me HJ. Hi, HJ. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Shay. My biggest um, role in here is going to be programming, especially okay. when it comes to the hoverboard. Well, uh, no pressure, but the last one ordered pizza on command, so. Make that happen. I am in the SimViz program. Um, I am in month four. I'm in programming too. I will be helping when it comes to um, adjusting the board, when it comes to like weight, speed, controlling the motors, you know, how fast they'll move, because that will be a biggest effect on how high the hoverboard will lift and things like that. So uh, what is your role? What are you doing on the team? I am basically just helping out with everything that I can. I do a lot of programming these printers I've built, and that's what we're gonna use you, to... Wait, you built these printers? Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My name is Ben Million. I'm in the Simvis major, and I am five months away from graduating. I was in the military for four years before this, so I missed out on the Iron Man helmet. I was disappointed. <laughs> I wanted to get in on this because I know that hoverboards are just the first step into human and technology interaction and using it as personal vehicles. My name is Mitchell Hartwell. I'm in month 13 of the Simulation and Visualization program. Uh, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, and pretty much just as soon as I turned 18, I was like, all right, that's it, I'm out of here. Let's go <laughs> do something fun. And what's your name? I'm Jacob. Jacob. What are you going to be doing? I'm going to be 3D modeling the parts that we're printing out. Oh, so okay. the most recent thing I worked on was a hallback disk. I'm Jacob Meeks. I'm in the computer animation program, and I'm on month eight. I watched the first set of videos, and I just thought that was incredible what they were doing. I really wanted to be a part of it. So when I saw that and I saw the 3D printing being used, I thought this is my chance to kind of break into that field. What are you up to? What are you working on? So we're teaching our friend how to uh, do a, send signals to a servo and make it rotate. See, I, I, I know what this is. This is Ricky. Ricky had a very important job last That's time. That's Friday. Oh, is this Friday? Friday. That's his twin. His twin, Ricky, in our last project, he was in charge of making sure the Iron Man helmet opened and closed. It was big responsibility. Let's figure out what steps 
we need to take. What's the first thing we have to do? Uh, we're gonna get the first motor to spin fast enough to levitate. So first motor levitation? So step one is we get one motor going, because in the end we want four, and so you know, the very obvious first step is to make sure one works and it doesn't explode or send magnets flying everywhere. Two would most definitely having a second motor and allowing them to communicate. Faraday's law states that if you run a magnet over an inductive surface such as copper and aluminum, uh, you create a current. You create a north and a south pole on that copper plate. As you run it faster and faster, that pole gets stronger and stronger, and so they repulse each other and they cause a, a repulsive force to actually hover. Okay, but what about the third thing? If we can get these both done. Third and fourth motor. Third and fourth motor? Yeah. yeah. So Lexus built a hoverboard which uses uh, liquid nitrogen and superconducting material. So basically you, um, you put magnets underneath a, uh, a piece of aluminum or such. You super cool that down to negative 237 degrees. That super cooling causes the uh, actual atoms to realign to actually create an opposite pole of the magnets that are underneath it. So we're not doing what Lexus did. They're a multi-million dollar company. They can afford to do that kind of thing. We're building a version where you take that theory, but you flip it on its head. You put the magnets on top and you put the plate underneath. So you're making the magnets move, not the uh, metal itself. Third and fourth motor, what do we need them to do? I mean, they're going to yeah, yeah. have to be exact same. Balance. They're going to have to balance. Weight will be a major factor. The more weight you put on something like this, uh, it actually causes more torque to be put into the opposite rotation. So it's going to want to counter rotate, which can actually stop the motors or freeze them up. And then they'll lock up and they'll die. Distance is another factor, depending on how high it sits. Because the farther away a magnet gets, the less pull it actually has. And what about four? What about putting it together? When does that happen? It's the fourth one. So putting it together. So would you say five is the testing phase? Yep. Who's going to be the test? Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> Have fun. There can be so many variables, uh, small variables in this project. Um, the print actually, is it going to hold the magnets? That's pretty much the first concern. All right, so the hole for the rotor was actually on there, but I guess something happened that it deleted it. And so when he sent it through Slack, we put it in print and it was printing the wrong part. Well, I'm still trying to figure out the exact thing of what happened here. I must have done something wrong while saving it, I guess, is my best guess. But right now I'm looking at the model and there's no hole for the rotor. Oh. But I can cut a hole in five minutes on there, and then we just have to restart the print. Well, we've already run into our first problem. <laughs> so we got to be really careful with the details on this one, because you know if we mess up something with the 3D printing, for example, one little problem could cost us 11 hours, because this one piece takes 11 hours to print. You know, we don't realize that right away, then it's going to turn into this big problem later where we're getting a crunch for time. The thing I'm nervous about is the manufacturing of the parts. A lot of the other industries have industrial equipment to make it. We have 3D printers and we're limited to what we have. Another thing is you put all these magnets in a very special array called a Hallback array. And when you spin them up really fast, you get this levitating force. And these magnets are so strong that if these calculations aren't very precise, these magnets could just go shooting out. Any other issue I see is the stabilization of board, how, it's, how stabilized it's gonna be and how much uh, height we can get. We're pretty much creating variables on how the disc gonna interact. We're probably gonna create maybe some for each of them. For example, something spins at this speed, then the other ones are gonna get the readings of that speed and it's gonna equalize it. For example, if someone gets on the hoverboard, it will have a variable for that weight, so it could kind of, you know, see how much it weighs, you know, then it'll do whatever it needs to do dependent on that weight. I'm dealing with classes six days a week on top of this, and I actually learned the Fusion 360 the weekend before. I'm gonna have to do some extra time myself to learn how it works and get it together, but I'm starting to get more confident and get a good feel of how it's going. Okay, so it is day one of Hacker Lab. We have some returning faces, Dylan and Abjeet. I'm so excited to see them again. I'm super, super excited about this new project. It's a whole new concept. 
When I was growing up, I was a huge fan of Back to the Future, and I always dreamed of having a hoverboard and being able to skate all around town and just kind of glide above things. So I hope this comes true. I hope this is functioning and we can use it in real life, but I feel like we're going to be facing a lot of obstacles, primarily the magnets. I don't know how you're going to get all those tiny, strong, strong, strong magnets to fit into an area and not go flying apart, but they're ready for it. I'm ready for it. If everything goes right, we should have some form of levitation. You got to make sure that magnet comes out now, because if that's not <laughs> I north... I did not put that in. OK, so that means the bed was unlevel, so we're a little off. The faster you get, that's going to get really unstable. I think we built a grenade, everybody. We're not panicking, but we got to start thinking about, OK. We're, we're panicking. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a comment below and tell us what you want to see happen to the hoverboard. And don't forget to click on that little bell to get the notifications for when the next episode comes out. And while you're here, go ahead and check out some other videos that Full Sail has come out with recently.